workshop is for making a rhythm game with Jando Daniels. Woo! Yeah. Now, that's, um, that's a prelude. The speaker, Mr. Valdez, is a person that doesn't exist. At least not in this universe. This is the only time Sonny Valdez will acknowledge that none of the bio is real. Okay, so my name is Mr. Valdez and I'm a luchador in a universe that is like your own. While luchadors in your universe is known for physical wrestling, Mr. Valdez, that's me, came from a world where they perform as programmers. It's amazing. You, I, I hope you guys that visit one time. I was accidentally transported to this universe by a strange Python Paul drum. I have no idea where it came from. It just appeared in my dream. The, and the worst part is I ran it and now I'm stuck here. I hope to return one day. In the meantime, I'm going to spend all my time here in this universe sharing secrets from my universe. And by complete coincidence, it's exactly the same. Let's talk about general channels. By the way, I'm going to make the assumption that everyone here in the room knows at least the tutorial for Django. Django Channels is a standalone plugin that extends Django to allow for web sockets, chat protocols, Internet of Things, and many more. You can use Synthronous and Asynthronous for drumming. It uses an event-driven architecture. I will show all, I will show all of this later. We will start with the original Django Channels tutorial to understand the fundamentals. Afterwards, we will make a simple game. I really hope everybody was able to connect here, preferably it's with the top. All right? Let us later, we're gonna use that. Now, normally in my workshop, I would ask everybody to type code because it's the only way to learn. To become a programmer, you should know how to code. But in the, I, I practiced my talk before and apparently one hour is not enough. So we will just clone a Git repository. You can find the Git repository here. And I'm sure you already seen the typo. It's not 2022 anymore. It's supposed to be 2023. Uh, oh no, what happened? Supposed to be 2023. So what is going to happen is after this talk, we're going to, I'm going to change this to 2023 and the first one would be deleted so for those who were trying to um, what's this called trying to do earlier uh, those who already tried to download try for 2022 right now after the talk is going to be 2023 Time travel, that's also part of this talk, apparently. Let's explain some concepts. Let's talk about the internet. As we all know, the internet is a series of tubes. This has been proven. Most protocols that is used to connect to the internet is called HTTP or the secure channel HTTPS. For web sockets, we use WS or WSS for the secure socket, uh, secure channel. For simplicity, we just now use WS. Insecure, yes, I know, I'm making everybody connect to my Wi-Fi and it's going to be insecure. Don't worry about it. What's the worst that would happen? Event-driven architecture. Events is basically an abstraction on things that can happen during a program's runtime. Let's imagine 
a hectic restaurant. These are three different events that then happen. Customer enters, come at you. Customer is seated. And the customer then order. As you can see, we go step by step. And there are some events that would be sent first and in order. One of the good things about event-driven architecture is if you're a coder or a team of coder, you can isolate and focus on each one. Each event can be a function or series of functions. Now, in the internet, we use what is called JSON. In gender channels, we have something called consumers. These are the classes that take data, take the event, and do something about it. There are multiple consumers, but we're going to focus on the JSON web server. This is the typos. It should be both of these that we're going to go over. When a client connects to your, jun to your Django app server, it's going to connect to an instance of a consumer. The consumer is basically what you use for communicating with the client. There will be times in which you want to have different consumer or different application to talk to each other. For example, in a chat room, we have one room, and that would be, just for this example, the channel layer. Of course, you can use channel layers for anything else. And multiple channel layers can be put into what is called a channel group. Each channel layer then, then subscribe to one or multiple channel groups. This will allow you to deliver messages to a client that is connected to multiple tabs, multiple devices, or even to group different, group one event to one channel group. I will explain this later, or rather demonstrate. Heads up, there's a restriction to channel group names. So, no emoji. Yeah, that's the worst part, no emoji. Just a check on the room, who here have tried Django development? Okay, so around 30% of the group. For those who tried Django development, by default, you would have gotten whiskey, W-S-G-E-I. It's pronounced whiskey, I don't know why, but hey, that's what the internet told me, and I always believe in the internet. Using whiskey, a web server like Nginx would be able to route to your Python Podram or Django Podram in this case. It has been around since year 2010, and it is synchronous. Afterwards, somebody wanted to make a spiritual successor to whiskey. It would allow for long-running connections such as WebSocket, and it will support asynchronous podramming. And I'm kind of sad, but it's pronounced ASGI and not something related to beer. It's sad. The internet has failed us. You must not. Part of gentle channels is to use a backend for communicating between the different uh, Django channels, Django layer. Django channel layer is a mouthful. The only currently official backend supported for channel layers is called Redis. Has anybody here tried Redis before? All right, a good number actually. For those who are not aware of Redis, it's basically a key value database. It is persistent and allows for high availability. Now, let's start developing a simple chat server. 
first thing we need to do is this one. We need to identify the events we need for creating a chap pod drum. This is the event that we need. Chat message, message, and message. Very simple. And I know some of you are already um, triggered by the idea that we repeat message three times, but hey, it's my talk. You're going to that fad. Let's create a Django app for chat. This is when we're going to show the code. All of you are programmers, so I'm sure nobody is going to be afraid of Git commands. Mm, not, not yet, maybe later. Yes, that's everybody's going to connect and, well, spoiler, we're going to chat. Yes, later. Fair enough. All right, everyone. So Python PH 2023, Basu 1, PyCon Malakas. Preferably the first one, yes. If there's problem, well, we're going to move to another. For the benefit of people watching online, I'm, we're asking the audience member, there's thousands of them here. Thousands. Anyways. Oh, they're even making noise over there. And we asked them, oh, oh no, this has been plus online. Oh no. Oh well, there's no way they could connect from the future into the Wi-Fi's. Now, this is the repository that I showed earlier that we're going to use. It has a lot of branches. Ignore the draft. Don't, don't look at my garbage. And we go into those step by step. Ah, it wasn't seen. Let's increase the size. So let's go first, initial Django. Django has their own hello world, and it's basically just a simple hello world. You wouldn't be able to connect to this because I haven't um, exposed yet. Always use a private window when you're accessing an internet live because it might accidentally expose some credentials. Also, that's what you're supposed to do with private windows. And buying gifts. Anyways, I'm sure everybody has already done this. It's very simple. It's basically the tutorial for Django. That is step one. Always well, we start with step one. Now, I'm going to get the Django channel chat. I did say that I'm going to do some scary JIT commands. These are the changes that you, uh, I've done for Django chats. Basically, I created a new app, and it should be basic for everyone. Doing a, starting a new app would make a chat directory, which contains a lot of things. And one of the things, of course, is to make sure that you put in setting chat. 
tanto piscina. There we go. Very basic jungle stuff. One of the things that you might be you is Daphne. Daphne is basically the ASGI uh, provider. That's we're going to use. It comes with Django channels. For those who did Django, this is the standard whiskey application or settings. You normally don't see this because it's very, it's usually comes included, battery included. If we're going to use ASDI, which is, it looks like this. We're going to define the prototype uh, router and we're going to say if it's a web socket, it goes to this route. Let me show you the route. This is the chat app and the URLs is very uh, standard. We're just going to go to an index and we're going to activate a room. The view is simple, just an index and a room.html. To route, to route, to route the web socket, this is the pattern that we use. Take note that we use, it's almost exactly the same as uh, standard Django. And instead of WSGI, we just say as ASGI. Before I show the back end, I'll show the front end. This is the HTML for the front end. Just a check, can it be seen? Okay, that's good. Very simple, what chat room you would like to enter, an input, and some JavaScript. The important part here is, once you submit, it will redirect you to the chat room. And this is the chat room. It's a lot longer, but should be manageable. It's just a JavaScript and two, uh, three buttons, uh, widgets. The chat log, the input, and submit. I know you're all Python developers and the front end is scary. I'm a back end developer too. So apologize in advance if I'm going to offend people with my front end skills. I have no front end skills. In JavaScript, you can create a WebSocket connection using this code. So as you all notice, it's WS for WebSocket instead of HTTP. And we're going to go to the route that we provided to Django earlier. We're going to provide the room name. Remember when I said earlier that Django Channels is an event-driven architecture? So, we have a on-message function. If our client would receive a message from Django Channels or our consumers, it will go through here. We are good boys and girls. If we open something, we always close it, right? Right? Nah, don't worry about it. I sometimes forget. I mean, what's the worst that would happen? Oh, the server's on fire. Nah, that's fine. Restart. Restart. Have you tried turning it off and on again? That's the solution. Huh. Strange that your universe also has the same solution as ours. Now, but this is the function to submit a chat, a text. And it's very simple. Whatever is in the chat message input widget, I'm going to JSON is streamify. If you all remember the events, it's 
takes a message parameter, and we just send it to the chat socket. This is the front end. Let's talk about the back end. This is the most important part of your Django channel application. It's the consumer.py. And it looks like this. I will explain async to sync later when we do do little talk about asynchronous and synchronous. But for now, we're creating a JSON web server, the web socket consumer. We provide the room name and the group name. If you all remember the channel layers group, this is it. We're basically creating a layer group for the group name. And then we just add ourselves to that group. Disconnect. Well, this is straightforward. You create an instance, be sure to disconnect properly. Receive JSON. If remember the send message from the front end, this is the function to receive the JSON. And basically, we're just going to send the message from the client and send it to the group, to the chat. Now, in Django channels, the syntax for messages for events is this way. Chat that message will be converted into chat underscore message. So if we're going to meet a different event, or yeah, the different event, we can just change this line and create a function name for that. And then we send the JSON. Now, I trust all of you, but I'm going to clean the group name just in case. Remember earlier when I said that the restriction for group names, no emoji? Well, let's make sure we confirm to that limitation. Let's see how it looks. So if I go to localhost 8000, later I'll share my IP address, and we can play with this. And this is the index. I enter this, and oh, wow. I, like I said, this is my front end. I'm not a front end developer. Hello, world. Huh, it doesn't work. Because before that, something. Remember when I said earlier that the back end is using Redis? We need to start a Redis instance. And of course, everybody has their own ways of starting a Redis instance. This is what I use. So sudo service Reddit server start. Well, here we go. And let's try again. Refresh and hello world. There we go. Now, is this really real time? Let's see. All right, so it works. Now, later we're going to connect to uh, the game, but for the interest of time, let's continue with the chat server. This is basically the hello world of chan Django channels. A chat pod drum. Ah, I skip a lot of steps. 
Okay, just imagine that step one was all of those. Yeah, I was supposed to do it one at a time. Yeah, it's fine. Let's talk about asynchronous programming. You all saw a hint of asynchronous programming earlier, and I need to explain what it means. It's a style of programming. Synchronous programming is basically code one at a time. Oh no, you saw my código. Oh no. Oh well, just pretend that I know exactly what I'm saying. Synchronous example. Fried chicken. That's his name. Wants to make breakfast. If you're doing a synchronous programming, first thing you're gonna do is wash rice, cook rice, serve rice, and cook bacon. I don't know what you guys were thinking about chicken made in breakfast, but they're gonna cook bacon. And finally, serve breakfast. That's for synchronous. It may take a while, but it will finish sooner or later. With a citronus programming, some tasks can be done in parallel. So, let's see how it looks like. This is fried chicken, number one and number two, so a sweet and clone ourselves. Chicken number one is washing the rice, while chicken number two is cooking the bacon. Or rather preparing. Now, sometimes, and it's this one for drumming, you need to wait for another event or another task to finish. But once it's done, you can now serve it as breakfast. I'm sorry, have everybody eaten? No? Uh, it's almost lunch anyways. Assist drones for drumming can allow for parallel tasks. And as you've seen earlier, Tasks can be, you might need to wait for the result. So, let's make a asynchronous programming. Oh, there we go. So, what I did was basically check out the async consumer branch and these are the changes that we did to the consumer. Uh, we took out the yeah, it's a little bit hard to see. Here we go. So, instead of using the synchronous version of the consumer, we use the asynchronous. Now, the thing is, group add for the channel layer is actually asynchronous. So, if you're using a synchronous uh, consumer, you need to convert this into asynchronous from asynchronous to synchronous. This is plain, this is specific li line. I'm unsure if it can be seen. It looks like it can't. Oh, there we go. Hopefully that's clear in the top down. Or just do a diff. So we don't need any, we don't need to convert from asynchronous to synchronous we're just trying to do a await and then accept it. Disconnect is also the same. And receiving JSON would be here. Uh, also asynchronous to await. And same with the chat messages. If we run the server, it should be exactly the same. No difference. You know you're doing good if it's nothing changes. If you did something to make it optimal or change library and it's still the same, it's good. If you've noticed the code earlier, there was no way for you to log in. We can use Django authentication to log in. So we can use self.scope user to act as the 
or rather scope.user tells Django channels that it's a user authentication. It's a user. And basic HTML, just log in and log out. We now have a login, and if I try to log in, I need an administration password. What do we do? Let's hack. Admin123. So, hello, admin. Let's enter, and let's have admin chat. You are banned. Okay, let's see if it works on the other side. Refresh, always remember to refresh. And we didn't see that admin is talking. I'm going to speed things up. Uh, we're going to add periodic tasks with salary. So the thing is, right now, the tasks are, everything has no events. Um, there is something called a heartbeat that basically made the pod drum do things, do tasks on certain intervals. So long running tasks, use salary. And this is salary's logo, I don't know why. Functions are called tasks, and salary is then to use for scheduling tasks in the background. Ah, possibly it's a salary. That's strange. And it's a letter C. Wow. Only in this universe, yes. All right, so salary. With salary, you need to create a task.py. And this is basically what salary would use to run code. We're going to create a task called get chat facts, and it's going to send to the group chat, chat type python.ph. And as you can see, this is the event parameters. You need to tell salary to do the task every three seconds. Refresh, nothing happens. That's because we need to run salary. Uh, Okay, so salary is running in the background, and we're going to have salary do a heartbeat. Basically, this is the one that's going to schedule different tasks. Every three seconds, a chat fact would appear. Now, there it is. Did you know insert fact? It's being done in real time. I need to refresh. There you go. One of the challenges would be for you to create a to-do list for that. Uh, by the way, here is the comments for that. One of the fastest is possible. When Chuck Norris code fails, the compiler apologizes. Chuck Norris don't normally test his code, but when he does, he does it in production. Those are truths, facts. Let's add global chat.
So we can create a global a channel layer, a, a channel layer group called chat global. It's basically tell so that everybody who subscribed to that would be able to have our app communicate with them. Wow, it hung. Okay, let's see global chat. Global chat has been enabled. So that global chat, that fax, is being sent to the global chat channel. That's why this one is subscribed to that, and this one is subscribed also to that. And if I'm going to send a message here, it's just going to oh, refresh. It's not going to go to the other because this one is subscribed to a different group, channel group. All right. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to speed things up even more. We are until 12, or is it 11.45? Any day 12. We have 15 minutes to make a game. Let's go. <laughs> now, I misjudged the time. Does anybody have any questions for the chat about what we did? Any? You all just want to do the game, don't you? <laughs> Let's start developing a simple game. Rock, paper, scissors. Everybody knows how this, how this works. And two teams, red and blue. Players are randomly given a team. Each team has 10 seconds to choose a move. 10 seconds. And the move with the highest votes will be played against the other team. Players then change their name. Where will you be using top bottom? This would make it easier for everyone to understand the concept. One of the things that we need is a player ID. Each connecting client would be assigned a player ID to identify them, just as this person over here. For simplicity, we're gonna use the consumer to hold our player ID. So that's one of the things that we need, player ID. Another thing that we need is game state. In game development, game state is the data that holds the game. These are three different game states. We're going to use Redis to hold this in memory. Our other game states are player's current team, that current time, time team vote for rock, paper, scissors, a check on who won, and player names. These are the events that we're going to use for the game. Change team, update game, and update players. In game development, a function is going to run and is going to be the is going to be called a tick. That's basically what they call it in game programming, a tick. A tick can be called every microseconds. So if you are playing a 60 frames per second game, it's called every 16.67 millisecond. But rock, paper, scissors is a simple game. We're just now call our update every second instead. Let's do this one by one. Let's add teams.
ah, I, I, I did skip a step. I need to show the front end. This would be our front end. Basically, we have last match results. Red player, blue players, and they get to choose if they want to vote rock, paper, or scissors. It should look like this. Last match result tied. Left side is for red team, right side is blue team. Hopefully we have time for everyone here to play. We'll see. We'll do votes if you want to play rock, paper, or scissors. Yeah, very simple. In case of ties between two or three uh, different moves, it will be chosen in random. This is what our consumer would look like. Remember earlier when I said the consumer is basically general channels? Well, here we have team red and team blue. When a consumer or a client connects, we're going to randomly choose between red or blue. And then, we're going to trade channel groups for red team and blue team. Remember earlier when I showed the events? This is our event, it's called change team. And the routing would be, we basically added the game to our route. I'm going to refresh, and I am team blue. I'm going to refresh that then. Well, it's going to be team blue again. Let's do it again. I mean, what's the chances of blue ram coming up again? Huh. Really, team blue. Okay, whatever. I guess the game really wants me to be a team blue. Oh, there we go, team red, yay. So this is the consumer for changing team. I said earlier that everybody has um, has ten seconds to put a vote. So we're going to add timer. The timer will be built under salary tasks. So every one second, a salary task would activate and it would lower the time. And it will, we will be using Redis to hold the current time. So we're just going to update the tick. Salary has detected update game tick. And we're going to say that every uh, one second, we're going to send a game tick. I will refresh, and there's our timer. So this one is actually under the back end Redis, and every second salary would tell everybody in that channel that please lower the time by one.
by the way, well, this does not work. Rock, paper, scissor, no matter how many times I press it, it's not gonna work. Because there's no code yet. This is what we did with our move. Basically, if we receive JSON, we're going to play the task, play move. So the task is the one that's going to send a message via Redis, via Celery to Redis that this team, whatever team this current client is, and we will send the move. So once it, send, it receives the move, it's going to increase the value so can be one two three and so on the game state basically it this is the task that's going to send the current game state to the client for that specific team so if 10 voted for rocks it would be 10 and every time we restart the game we're going to change the rock, paper, scissor to a value of one. I'm going to run this. I am team blue. I will send a rock. Ah, see? A lot of votes for rock. A lot of votes for paper. And this would be restarted every 10 seconds. It goes back to one. The fun thing is we haven't started mating the game yet. Basically, how do we compare that rock would beat paper, paper would beat scissors, and scissors would pick beat beat rock? Well, here's the code for that. This is it. Uh, uh, red at uh, the move plus one module three. That would just say if who would win, blue or red. If there's tie, we take the highest, or rather random. And then we're going to send the front end whoever won the last time. Ah, somebody already won. Somebody played scissors. I mean, a paper. Let's play rock. So blue would play rock. And there's rock. Blue would play paper. I should have lowered the speed, but hey. Well, then I expect blue would pay paper. There we go. Now, just in case you think I'm cheating, which is a possibility. We're gonna play on the other team. Dimmy red, dimmy red, dimmy red. There we go. Okay, so team red is going to play rock. And Team Blue would play scissors. Of course, I've chosen the same one that's already here. Paper, red, pick paper. Red should win because, no, blue. Ah, I don't even know how to play rock, paper, scissors. There we go. And we can see that blue won. Five minutes left. That's, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. The final part is player names. Right now, everybody has no player name, but let's add that now. Oh, 
Okay, so apparently two people played as Anonymous again. Okay, it's always that way. When we were presenting, it's always... Okay, there we go. So Team Blue is Anonymous number 837. You can see that whenever we refresh, we create a new instance and connect to the game. And if we want to change name, we then just put here a uh, guy. And you can see blue is guy. And this one would be a uh, girl. There. So it gets updated. Okay. Last step would be resetting. I'm sorry if I'm trying to move fast. We're running out of time. So if we all notice, the anonymous player stays there. What should be done is every time that the timer goes down to zero, it should clear out all of the players that are here. So in this case, there's only two left. And I'm just not putting high. OK, and then after 10 seconds, high is still there. But if I were to refresh, basically create a new one, a new log in, Anonymous 16. On the next James uh, reset, Anonymous, Anonymous guy would be out. Okay, I know it's a little bit weak, but that's basically how you made a game with Django channels. <laughs> Any questions? It's unfortunate that we do not have time, so I do not have everybody play rock, paper, scissors. But the code is on GitHub, so... The code is, would be on 2023. I'm yeah. going to rename that later. Okay. You just ruined um, productivity for a lot of students and companies. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. I um, the, the meme. First time. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. I left some. Ch oh yes, please. Hello, um, Ramon from Thinking Machines. Just a simple, quick question. Um, you're using Celery as your task queue, right? And it's interacting with Django channels. So I'm thinking, like, how do you secure the connection between Celery and Django channels? So. Um, I maybe you can, you can provide just tips or maybe recommendations. Mm. I basically just use salary. Um, I sim let's talk later. Uh, this is simplified code. So there were some parts that I skip for the benefit of the uh, workshop. But good question. Yes, we then choose salary. Uh, any other question or am I out of time? Hi, um, Neil Bautista from Bocas Finance Corp. Um, you mentioned that there are sync and async consumers that you can use in Django channels. And in this case, we used async consumers. Mm -hmm. um, what are the cases when we would be using synchronous consumers? Or what kinds of examples of cases would be use synchronous consumers for Django channels? OK, so the first thing that I'm going to say is start with synchronous uh, programming. And then see if you can get it to work. Afterwards, you can decide if you are going to use a sync or not. Because most of the time, the synchronous version is good enough. And there are times that you would notice that, huh, maybe I should use a sync after the profile. And see if you can do it.